Oh, you are alive <laughs> again. I'm alive. This is, this, the, you, <laughs> you are alive. <laughs> But this is pretty good. Hello, Jameson. Good afternoon. Very good morning to you. <laughs> how, how are you, Jameson? Everything okay? Yeah, uh, we, we, were, we were talking about, you know, in Singapore this morning, the Prime Minister was saying that we can go without masks. Any, wow. Yeah, in, in, in the month of May. Okay. Yeah, oh, for outdoor, yeah, for outdoor. Specifically right. for outdoor, yeah. Okay. And, and there's no need social distancing. You know, <laughs> okay. Wow, yeah. that's, that, that's, good to, that's good to hear. I think um, here in Germany, we have record numbers. The numbers of new infections is as high as, as, as it has never been before. <laughs> so um, uh, politically, there's a discussion or even a new law that says, okay, all of these uh, restrictions should be lowered. But yeah, the numbers are still pretty high. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think, um, yeah, we can, we can see some um, yeah, good perspective uh, there. I mean, there's other parts uh, in the world where we would say the perspective at the moment is, is, not, is not so very good. So, um, yeah, I can really say that uh, we, we hope that this, this war will end, um, yeah, pretty soon, I think. Um, <laughs> would, would be nice. Yeah, that's true. We are live. Great. Okay. Yeah, and, and the, the new normal, uh, James, even starts here. Um, um, which is, uh, the, we have been for, on the first show. Real show, meet real people in Frankfurt yesterday, and it was uh, it, it was I think they had like more than thousand visitors. I mean, it's oh. a super small niche um, uh, show, um, uh, just about uh, you know instrumentation um, and uh, in, in this special field. And uh, but but I can tell you from from the bottom of my heart. It was just so great to see the people again, you know, and to talk to them. I mean, everyone had to wear a mask, but uh, still, it was was great, um, yeah, to to see the people in real life again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's hope uh, that the new normal, um, yeah, is, is is coming back. As you can see here, I'm I'm, I'm dressed in a short shirt, so. <laughs> Um, we are expecting super nice weather at the moment here in Germany. So, um, yeah, all of this looks pretty good and pretty great. Okay, yeah. Um, as always, I think it's very nice if you can just leave your comments um, from wherever you are watching us. Today, I think we have a very special topic. Um, a niche in the niche of the niche. <laughs> Maybe, James, we can... We can say it like this. Mm -hmm. um, it's good to have Jose from from Dubai uh, visiting us live. Yeah, you're from Singapore, obviously. Um, then uh, we have our friends from Indonesia. It's it's just great to be there, and also um, for sure our uh, community manager to be us in in the back. So, okay. Um, I think we have a lot to talk about uh, today, so uh, let's let's not waste <laughs> any more time with, with our um, with our introduction here. Um, yeah, next show, Achema, Achema 2022. Um, I included the new dates here. Um, Oh, so we have some greetings from Romania. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vizan. <laughs> so, and there is another from Vietnam. <laughs> I think that it's nice to see the, 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 the whole world is uh, again kind of coming together here. Yeah, Achima 22, um, I included the new dates. Um, as uh, you know, it was uh, postponed uh, to the 22nd um, to 26th of uh, August. And um, I can just say, you know, from having the feedback from the, la from the show yesterday, maybe it's going to surprise us. Um, James, what do you think about the international people? Are you, do, I, I do think you think... That 
they are they are so eager to look forward for activities you know <laughs> they will find every reason if they can fly away, they will fly yeah. away. <laughs> yeah i i have the same i have the same feeling here still i must admit it this is in the middle of our uh, summer breaks and in many regions of the at least in europe um italy uh, and, and the south of Germany is, is pre it's pretty much uh, vacation time. So, uh -huh. yeah, I I'm not exactly sure uh, how how that ends, but um, yeah, I can just tell you if, if my heart would decide, um, I think it's a good decision to 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 come there. And again, let me repeat our invitation for all the partners. Um, obviously, um, if you need any support, hotel booking, invitation letter, whatever, just let us know. Um, we would be happy to to invite you to come over. Okay, yeah, um, very short. Just uh, an, another um, uh, yeah fact that uh, we included also um, our, all of our videos here in uh, YouTube, and that there's access for the YouTube. Um, uh, and all of the videos will be stored there. So um, if uh, you try to find something, and at the moment, James, and we are also streaming this video into um, YouTube Live. Mm -hmm. So um, it's going to be available on, on both platforms, I think should be helpful. Okay, now let's, let's touch on an important topic. Um, Jimson, um, I mean, in, in the preparation uh, of this webinar, um, I think we, we, we've been thinking, okay, what is the components we are going to highlight here? Because there's many small components, mm -hmm. sometimes with a very, very big impact on the yeah. sample handling yeah. system. Absolutely, yeah. And um, therefore, I think it was a good idea to say, okay, yeah, let's focus on these smaller items, um, which make the sample handling system kind of complete, or maybe sometimes make it more comfortable. Or, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, some regions uh, or some of the components just make it work. And mm -hmm. um, I think what, what I would like to do here, I mean, we, in, on the picture, we've been highlighting, for example, the peristaltic pumps. Oh, I have one pump here. Um, and we were going to discuss about this. But um, I would say, Jimson, let's have a shorter focus on, mm -hmm. on the components where we had special webinars on. You yeah. might remember um, the guys from Gartner Denver, Thomas Pump, mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. um, where we had this great um, explanation of uh, the, the, the peristaltic pump mm -hmm. and how it works and the configuration it does. Same here with um, uh, KNF. Um, I, I still remember uh, the, the webinar uh, we had uh, with mm -hmm. um, Felix Ulrich uh, and the team from, from KNF. I think we have mm -hmm. a lot of, we, we, we gathered a lot of information in this webinar. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but still, I mean, this this just shows the importance also of this equipment and this components. And um, yeah, th therefore, I think we have enough <laughs> other topics uh, to focus on and to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if we do have a short overview here, um, maybe the people who are attending our webinars for um several times might remember this type of overview i still believe it's a pretty nice pnid overview in order to show um yeah or to give an overview of the of the different components what what do you think mm -hmm. yeah i think uh i think this is the basic i will say uh, not a basic but rather is the the fundamental of a sand systems uh design right uh, I think there are so many things to discuss about uh, the sizing, the positioning of the component, yeah, and so much more. And uh, being a system integrator, both you and myself, uh, I hope you know we are able to, to to provide as much resources to the audience today. Right. Yeah. And I think this overview also shows basic PNID is, is pretty nice. I 
Remember last webinar, I <laughs> quoted your sentence, what you said that there is not just one sample handling system. So <laughs> I think um, especially uh, also when it comes to these accessories, the different uh, components um, which are in this um, PNID here mm -hmm. um, is something also which need to be adapt on, on, on the application. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, yeah. And, and therefore, I think um, it's pretty good to, to give an overview. So, what what we try to do in the, in the preparation of this webinar is the following: um, we dedicated different accessories, also sometimes options, um, um, to the different fields. I mean, um, if if you know, there's someone uh, I'm, I'm talking to for the first time and he's asking, okay, what are you guys doing? And I always say, okay, we are responsible for the extraction, the transportation and the conditioning of the probe. And um, I think that's, yeah, probably the same order um, we arranged uh, the accessories here. So mm -hmm. first of all, we are going to talk about accessories in the field for the gas sampling probe which means what is um, accessories which can additionally be used or which are required in order to make sure that the primary probe sampling is, is, is working fine. Mm -hmm. Second field, and I must admit um, that the accessories for uh, the heated sample line is not so much. Um, so I think this section will be kind of finished a little bit sooner, but I also have the temperature controller here. We will talk about um, temperature sensor and PD 100s. And then I think, um, James, and somehow we have to make sure that we have an, the, the most of the time we will allocate uh, for the accessories uh, for the gas cooling or gas conditioning, right? Um, right, right. So, but, 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 but still, I mean, each component, uh, yeah, is, is worth it to spend some time on, and um, therefore I think, uh, yeah, it's 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 important um, yeah, uh, yeah. That, that we that we have enough time uh, to yeah. talk about. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, in fact, I have uh, so much to share in every component that you we we we're going to show them. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, on the on the practical point, you know. And uh, let's let's move on, and then then we yeah, 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 talk yeah, the yeah, real yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that, I think that's good. Okay, um, let's let's really slow down uh, or reduce uh, our uh, self introduction to the minimum. I think everyone who's attending this webinar here knows that we are uh, yeah designing, uh, developing, designing, and manufacturing um, gas sampling probes in a huge variety, um, starting from the PSG basic probe uh, over the plus probe, which I have in my bag, which we will see because there's this uh, very, uh, or there's some options uh, um, we we offer together with the PSG plus probe and also uh, our, um, let's say, newer uh, solution portfolio on ATEC solution um, in the field of gas sampling probes. So, um, Jameson, I mean, one of the maybe most basic things but super important for the sample handling system itself is mm -hmm. the sampling tube, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, th that I would say really depends on in which application are we measuring, what type of material can be mm -hmm. can be used. Yeah. Uh, I think there's one yeah. point about our sample uh, tube that uh, many of the audience are unaware mm -hmm. is about the thickness of the tube. It is not mm. a, it is not a pipe that you can just easily substitute it without realizing what is that insight that we have taken into consideration. You see, the okay. stainless steel that we are putting in right now is it is it is taken into consideration about the velocity of the sample flow. Right. We have taken into consideration about the resonance, the vibrations, right? When it's inside the duct, we can't right. see. You see, so. Um, Many people buy the probe without buying the pipe. You know, you can do it locally. Yes, we know. Uh, but the fact is that there is a hidden agenda that whether they are selecting the right 
uh, wall thickness. Mm -hmm. All right. This is a thing that if you want to buy it from us, uh, this is something that you didn't know you, it won't go wrong. You see, the, yeah. the, 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 the velocity, the, the speed of the flue gas in the, in the dark is easily reached 20 meters per second. All right. All the way to 20, I mean, 15 to 20 meters per second, depending on the height of the, of the stack. So those, those vibrations, the resonance all right, that occur exposed to our sample pipe, uh, something that the audience should uh, take care of. Yeah. Not just looking at the temperature alone. Yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. Sometimes that product looks very easy. I mean, everyone will understand that reaching temperatures, sampling temperatures, um, which are in the field of 1,800 degrees C, for example. I mean, this is not standard SEMS we are talking here. This is process measurement, right? Um, and there everyone will understand that, that that requires a special material. But like you said, Jim, the... Um, we should never forget the probe tube is the direct link, the direct connection into the process. And that can be under extreme conditions like you just mentioned. Um, so yeah, uh, you're right. That's, that's a very good, uh, that's a good, very good um, idea to, to share this. Uh, that, that's true. Um, another component, and maybe when, when, when you remember when we talked about our gas sampling probe in, in one webinar, we haven't stressed too much uh, so far, is the pre-filter and the pre-filter options we have. Um, and um, uh, allow me, Jameson, also to, to give a little bit insight why um, we are not discussing this too often. I mean, as you, as you can see it here, um, this is uh, something you can add to the probe tube. Um, having a pre-filter inside the process so that you don't need to handle, this is basically the idea of a pre-filter, that you do not need to handle yeah, any dust or any particles inside the gas sampling probe and the filter chamber itself. Um, so, and, and that's the reason why we have, um, yeah, these uh, different options here also in different material qualities um, in order, um, yeah, to, to reach uh, different temperatures. For example, the stainless steel version, which I have here, or there's Hasseloy. Uh, um, even if you have higher uh, temperatures. But it's, it's a little bit a philosophy question, I would say. Um, my guess is, Jensen, in 80% of the quotes where we include this pre-filter, we are forced to do so. <laughs> <laughs> and and what do I mean by saying forced? Um, that, if you have, if you run on a different concept with the probe and you have a smaller filter surface compared to our big filter surface we have in our probes, you might need a pre-filter. Or what, what? What is your judgment yeah, of, the, yeah, of the situation? Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. I agree. Yeah. So if if we are free to discuss with the customer or with the end user, or maybe you with the customer and the end user together, and we can share our idea. I think it's always better to do something outside, meaning to have the big filter surface uh, when you're running into situations where we have a lot of dust. And um, because we should always consider this here is in the process. If something goes wrong on the pre-filter, or if you do, if the pre-filter for whatever reason is clocked, yeah, and you have to change the pre-filter, you have to get access into the process. And um, as far as our maintenance philosophy is, is, is concerned, um, we try to avoid it. That's pretty much what we do, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, this is one point that uh, I used to talk to uh, our business partner. Uh, many a times they are unaware that the sample probe that we are providing, they are, we have an advanced version which has, which has a double purging or they call it a dual purging. 
So this dual purging uh, means a sample probe itself, it allows to handle very high dust, all right? Yeah. Uh, as much as like in the thick reference to a cement plant at the cow signer or at the, or at the measuring point of a preheater, we have probes that has a dual purging. In this yeah, case, I, 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 I would show, I would show short okay, you yeah, sure. when, when, when we talk about the next item there, but, but it's, it's great that you, that you uh, came up with this. This is always what we show. And this is maybe the reason why this version is not our filter. It's, uh, it's a maybe standard filter really needs a pre-filter in some applications and ours don't or doesn't. Right. So that's, that's maybe, maybe one of the, of the difference difference here. Yeah. And uh, next point uh, from you, which I would like to jump on and show in detail when, when we are getting to the probe. Um, but before that, Jensen, maybe also a very important item, um, maybe not so much, I don't know, what do you think? But I would say a, a heated probe tube is mm -hmm. something which is not so often needed in process measurement, but for SEMS, it's, it's, it's really important. Well, yeah. What do you think? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is really needed, uh, especially those people talking about acid dew point. Yeah, not the water dew point. Do not confuse with water dew point. We are talking about acid dew point. Yeah. yeah. So the, it again depends on the type of axis, you know, the, the axis that is inside the, the sample, whether it is HCL or we talk about SO2. So to be safe, you know, uh, it is always recommended if the process temperature, uh, you know, it falls below or at the region of the acid dew point, it is always good to have a heated sample tube. Yeah, no, because sometimes when, especially cold power plants, depending on how they do the, the SOX treatment, yeah, um, yeah they, they, they can already be a very wet environment and then mm -hmm. you have your, your washout effect yeah. might already start in the probe tube. So, yeah, I mean, it looks relatively simple. I can tell you it's relatively heavy. <laughs> and... Um, important thing here is in the manufacturing um, uh, is that you make sure that all of the heating, you know, really uh, uh, goes to the end and that you give some extra heating at the end when it comes to the flange. So in order to avoid any cold spot here, right? Um, and uh, we manufacture this in different lengths and uh, dimensions and sizes. So... Um, even in ATEX areas, uh, this is not a very common application, but it's also available in ATEX areas. Um, so, um, yeah, I would say, just a guess, in future SEMs, we will see this type of application more often um, because uh, lower measurement ranges um, will, um, yeah, will give, give more focus uh, on this. Okay, yeah, I have something I would like to show in detail. Maybe Jameson, you can start with yeah, the theoretical yeah. this explanation. This is this is really then... my baby. I, I really like to. Uh, <laughs> I always, <laughs> I always encounter you know many of these uh, when it comes to system integration. Uh, many a times when it comes to back purge, all right, uh, back purging, uh, we do not want the air to go back to the gas analyzer. So what options do we have? Uh, most of the people will get a solenoid valve, all right? And then they will shut off the uh, sample outlet from the sample probe, all right? To, so that they have a back purging and prevented the air from going back to the gas analyzer. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with this. However, if you were to do, if you were to select a, a solenoid valve, you need a junction box and you need space at the... Uh, the sample probe outlet that again uh, has a potential of a cold spot, which is relatively uh, not suggested if there is a high SO2. There comes our very, very important shut off valve, right? Whether it is an EX area or a general purpose area, this mechanical valve play a very, very vital role, very handy. Yeah. 
Yes. Absolutely, James. Maybe to, to show this a little bit more in detail, because I mean, it's, it's our purpose to give our viewers here some more insights. So this shows the back perching. Um, this is uh, our solenoid valves for the back perching. And as you can imagine, you know, these guys are um, due to the dimension of the tubing here. This is, yeah, I think we can say maybe the, yeah, the most efficient back perching. You see um, uh, um, the, 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 the copper tubing here, and this is the, the first and the second stage back perching. And due to its efficiency and due to the big pressure it's going to bring into the probe and clean the filter, first of all, the filter chamber, and then back to the process, um, it's um, giving, and this is what, what you just said, James, is giving some pressure to um, the heated sample line. Just imagine mm -hmm. the heated mm -hmm. sample line is connected. The heated sample line and the entire probe is heated up to 180 degrees C. So um, PTFE, which is very often the tubing, which is used inside um, the heated sample line with 180 degrees C is, I mean, it's not stainless steel. So it's not, um, the, the pressure can do some harm. And uh, Jameson, like you said, mm -hmm. depending on how long the heated sample line might be, uh, the pressure can even do some harm to the um, mm -hmm. analyzer system. And uh, therefore, this little guy here, because, you know, in preparation of this webinar, I said, okay, let's, let's put um, one version with uh, the shutoff, or with a pressure reduction valve, very important difference, and one version without, but you cannot tell the difference. And mm -hmm. the beauty is, like you said, James, I mean, there's also the, the solenoid, the heated solenoid valve shut off. 100% shut off solution available, but you have to heat it. Otherwise you're getting a cold spot. And mm -hmm. that is the big advantage because we are just going to change this to um, this, this, this smaller version, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So taking, taking advantage of this, or this webinar, I would like to take this chance to clarify that many people have mistaken this as a check valve. All right. It is not a check valve. I repeat, it is not a check valve. Is a shut off valve. So what does it mean? In fact, uh, there are, you can have the flow, the bi-directional flow. Uh, so it, it will only trigger or activate it when the pressure, a back pressure during the back perch of higher than 1.8 bar absolute. All right. Then the mechanical spring will shut completely. You see? So yeah, it is not a check valve. Yeah. And this is how it looks like. <laughs> As you can see, there is some um, uh, the, the te technology is inside and, and based on the pressure, it will reduce uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the pressure which is given to the heated uh, sample line. So um, I would say if someone requires a complete shut off, um, there is no other way than choosing the solenoid um, version of it. But if you want to reduce the pressure on the heated sample line, this might be the most efficient. And yeah, James, maybe we also talk about pricing. I mean, <laughs> yeah, this is a very economical uh, yeah, yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah. As you can imagine, you just change the existing yeah. swedge lock uh, fitting against uh, this version mm -hmm. and so you're good so um, let's say the, uh, the the effort compared to the situation when you have to include a complete heated solenoid valve is, yeah. is just something uh, uh, which is which is more easy mm -hmm. okay um, I think at least main components we we've just uh, touched on here um so let let's let's talk about heated sample lines jimson and accessories and options on the on the heated sample lines mm -hmm. um i mean we must admit that due to the different version the flexible version and the extruded versions which we have um 
it's um, uh, it, it depends uh, what kind of heating um, technology is used. So um, if in the let's say in the most easiest way, we would just have a self-regulating heating cable. Mm -hmm. In this case, you do not need a temperature controller. Mm -hmm. The only thing you might need is um, a confection set, a pre pre-confection. Yeah, um, maybe in the easiest version with a shrinking sleeve. Uh, so you just have the line, you have the connection to power, you have a shrinking sleeve, that's it. Um, mm -hmm. But especially when we talk about higher temperatures and when we talk about uh, 180 degrees C, we need to operate this these type of lines, the heated sample lines with a temperature controller. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... Um, this is the reason why I would like to give an overview here um, that um, first of all, there is, we have a long list of solutions for prefabrication. So we can prefabricate the lines um, and we include um, uh, the PT100 in the po positioning which the customer requires. Or we can also send this, and this is a picture here, um, mm -hmm. as a set so uh, it's also possible that these yeah uh, confection sets will be given to the line as an option and the confection can be done on site maybe also mm -hmm. um, a very good um, advantage here and also this Jemson maybe sometimes is a little bit uh, yeah not not seen uh, too much in detail because we have to make sure that it's ga gas and water tight um, mm -hmm. And yeah, you it's, it's it's kind of a requirement. Yeah, in fact, a lot of information uh, for the audience. You can go to our YouTube. Yeah, you just have to type mm -hmm. in uh, our company name followed by the product that they are looking at. In this case, it will be the uh, sample heated line. Right. You will see that you know uh, how to handle them. You know when the point of uh, the point of from delivery. How you cut them, how you were uh, able to uh, put them together, the end assembly, all right, and uh, all those kind of things can be found uh, quite detailed uh, on the YouTube. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're true, you're true. That's right. So um, also here, uh, just to to show this in in uh, let's say real life, uh, this is the ST forty um, nine um, temperature controller. Um, temperature controller gets then connected with a PT100 uh, and um, yeah, very easy uh, to program this. Uh, we do have another version. So this is a standard um, uh, version uh, for the cabinet. Yeah, and for the cabinet uh, installation, we would always recommend um, uh, to use this uh, version. And um, yeah, if you have a, a wall mounting uh, situation, uh, that would be the DC-10, um, the, the temperature controller. Uh, also very easy uh, in, in handling. And uh, yeah, I can, I can say we have so many installations out there. So um, very reliable and, and uh, good product, uh, which yeah, mm -hmm. um, helps uh, the customer to, to very easy program mm -hmm. um, the temperature. And I mean, at the end, uh, the temperature controlling um, is one of the most essential points for, for the heated sample line. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, so this is, let's say, the kind of accessories um, yeah. we can offer there. Just, just to emphasize one, one thing about the temperature controller, right, to the audience, it must be, you must select a PID, right, not on off controller. It has to be a PID controller. You have, yeah. uh, you, you could have uh, the best heated line. But if you compromise on the heated uh, uh, temperature controller, you know, that's the beginning of the problem. Please choose a PID controller. Okay. You have some, uh, you've seen some installation where it failed or what is that, Jameson? Yeah. If, you, if uh, there are some very economical uh, temperature controller available in the market, some of yeah. the uh, you know, people who are inexperienced, uh, it can reach the temperature that they want. But the big hysteresis the dead band, you know, of controlling the, especially when there's a high acid dew point. Yeah. Mm. yeah. 
that is the way they, they feel uh, a lot of uh, reproducibility of the measurement results. Okay, so you're saying the range, the um, yeah. yeah, the range. How you call that in English? Hysteresis. Uh, the 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 band. I mean the hysteresis. Hysteresis. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very similar to the <laughs> to the word we we use in Germany. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that's a good advice as well as well. Um, yeah, because uh, condensate will happen if uh, sometimes if you only drop ten percent. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So and then you have to make sure that this is a very accurate uh, steering. I I got mm -hmm. this. I understand. Okay. Okay, Jemsen. Any more uh, things? Maybe as an option, um, it's worth to mention that, and we had an own webinar about this. When we talk about um, stainless steel in heated sample lines, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, this is not an accessory, but this is more like an mm -hmm, option. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The special surface treatment maybe is also something uh, we can we can mention. Yeah. Um, remember that nice webinar we had with the company Henkel and uh, with uh, the guys from Silcotech, um, <laughs> where where the, the, they gave us uh, some um, yeah some very good information um, re regarding um, the special advantages and the the great overview um, between the different technologies for surface treatment. Yeah. Maybe we can just refer to, to this session. Um, and uh, uh, Tobias, I don't know if you can maybe find this on, on YouTube and share this here to the audience. I think it will be uh, helpful uh, that if someone is interested in more details on this, uh, we can just refer to this uh, rather than repeating uh, all what we've discussed at that time. Yeah? Good. Okay, Jameson, now comes your part. <laughs> our part <laughs> our part okay <laughs> you're right no no but but i think we are good in timing um we, we said that we would like to spend the most of the time for uh, the accessories in the field of gas conditioning and, and maybe gas cooling um the, the idea of the mak10 or mak20 our newest product in this field is or was to have not just a gas cooler responsible for drying the gas, but also equipping this as a complete gas sampling, gas conditioning system, right? And um, this is also a big difference in the architecture and uh, in the design of the MAK10, MAK20 compared to the BCR product line, right? Um, and uh, so the accessories we are going to show here, some of them um, you can include into the cooler and some of them uh, not. Some of them will be, will be used as an ex external uh, mm -hmm. version. Yeah. So, Jameson, where, where should we start? I, I think in this is a very useful diagram, you know, very useful diagram that we can have an overview of the major components that we like to share with the audience. Um, you know, we have we have uh, things like a filter element, a filter element, for instance. All right. Um, as far as we are concerned, we always choose the filter element. The particulate fi filter element is always chosen with PTFE me membrane. This is mm -hmm. particularly important, uh, not because of some other components may cause the absorption of SO2. So in, in reality, uh, when we talk about the same system, uh, so do do feel the difference where we talk about filter element that compare to any others. When we come to AGT, we talk about same system. We always choose PDFE uh, filter mm -hmm. element material. Mm -hmm. Like for example, the peristaltic pumps. You see, if you you know, many people think that peristaltic pumps are just a condensate pump. Majority, I would say ninety nine percent, we use it as a peristaltic pump to remove the condensate. However, there is a small application that many people have overlooked. Uh, it's still a peristaltic pump. Uh, we use it as a acid dosing pump, as a dosing pump. Yeah. So the speed in this asynchronous motor, 
all right, allows in one direction. All right, so the speed itself combined with the size of the tubing, uh, it allows the injections of acid, all right, especially on the uh, flue gas desulfurization, all right, mm -hmm. the flue gas desulfurization, FGD application, you may want to consider uh, injecting acid into uh, the gas conditioner to bring the flue gas back to uh, the pH, back to acidic to prevent mm -hmm. any losses. One mm -hmm. of the one of the thing. Another area uh, we talk about again on the flue gas uh, desulfurization. Uh, many times they are using wet scrubber, and it comes to this condensate pump. Is you know a lot of people may not be aware that this condensate pump can be a double the the speed to remove the uh, the saturated water all right so uh, do be aware that we can offer a peristaltic pump uh, it looks identical but the amount of water is double the speed you can remove right. the water quickly yeah yeah that's uh, that, that's true and that's also what we learned in the webinar that there's uh yeah um many options uh, in order to configure this. And you're right, Jameson. Uh, mm -hmm. um, another item where uh, the peristaltic pump is connected to is this here. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, looks, mm -hmm. it looks very small. Yeah, it's made from glass. Um, and this is our pre-separator. Yeah. Um, in, in, in some cases, you might have so much water, um, mm -hmm. or water content, let's say, uh, in the gas conditioning or in the gas cooling phase that you need to pre-separate uh, the water. And um, this is um, the big advantage of this technology here is you have a very efficient pre-separation of the water so that, and very fast, um, because also when it comes to wash out, um, it matters how long has the water contact with the gas um, and this is something, so this pre-separator would be connected to another peristaltic mm -hmm. pump with, for example, Jimson, and uh, mm -hmm. thanks for, for adding this, um, with um, a higher speed, yeah, with um, a higher RPM rate, mm -hmm. yeah, with, uh, yeah. and then it will allow it also to, to um, remove this. Uh, yeah. Jimson, maybe a little bit helpful as a guidance kind of for, our, um, uh, for the people watching this. I would say there's some components which makes sense, complete sense to integrate into the cooler or the conditioning system. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. some of the items you can discuss, you know, depending on the philosophy. Let's take, for example, the gas sampling pump. Mm -hmm, gas mm -hmm. sampling pump, mm -hmm, we have mm -hmm. this uh, KNF version here, um, the N86. Uh, um, mm -hmm. the, we have the option to include this into the MAK, into our MAK product line. But I also understand that in some sample handling systems, people, um, or in some, uh, especially for SEMS, they pr yeah, prefer to have the pump outside of the mm -hmm, cooler. Mm -hmm. okay, can, you, can you explain why? Yeah, uh, I, I think there are two, only one reason for that, but I'd like to add on the second reason. The, the reason is uh, in the maintenance point of view. Right. You see, the, the diaphragm itself has a lifespan as it, as it works continuously. Yeah. So we have uh, 8,600 hours a year, approximately. All right. So we need to replace the diaphragm every uh, 4,000 hours if it's continuously working. So we do not want to touch the controller. It is easier to put the pumps outside the controller. And mm -hmm. one more thing, the pump must be higher than the gas cooler. <laughs> Just be remember, yeah? Do not put the pump lower than the gas cooler. Any right. condensation happens, we we'll have to pull back to the... <laughs> so therefore, it has to be higher than the gas cooler. This is the point that on the physical property point of view, uh, just take, take note on that. But one more thing, I'd like to take this chance to say a little bit, uh, why buy a sample pump from us? Uh, the reason is that we have done a slight modification. Uh, we have, you know, the same pump, you can 
you know, when we come to the factory, uh, we have done this slight modification to enable a, 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 a strong suction, all right? And we delivered a soft push, a softer output. Why are we doing that is because we do not want the flow meter, all right, to have that surge and then the, the flow meter to have a pulsation, a, you know, a small, uh, like, like moving <laughs> on, the, on the rotor meter. And that yeah. makes that makes the, uh, the the systems that you know the configuration allows the operator to regulate the, the flow more accurately. Yeah. Right. So again, you know, these are small things that many of the time we do not inform the uh, the buyer or the audience. But this is a chance for us to inform you. Yeah. These are small things that we have done, we have improved uh, before we deliver the pumps to you. Yeah. Yeah, that's that, that that that's good. That's good to say. Uh, that's good to say. And flow meter is another item uh, we can we can see here, Jensen. Um, what, what you just mentioned. I mean, I think it's pretty. Yeah, uh, it's it's a good uh, value. It's it's a good customer value to include this into the um, into the cooler. Um, mm -hmm. And um, yeah. Maybe another option I would like to mention here um, is the liquid sensor. Mm -hmm. um, liquid sensor with the finder um, um, electronic, uh, which I'm going to show here. Um, yeah, it's also an additional, I, I would call it maybe it's a safety belt, right? It's a protection uh, for the analyzer. Maybe when there is a situation where there's a lot of water coming, so um, that um, this allows really uh, to to give an alarm to the um, uh, through the analyzer system, and so that the that the analyzer system is able to shut off um, the um, yeah the gas sampling pump, so that the analyzer um, at the end is not loaded or uh, flooded with water, right? Um, so this is another important accessory mm -hmm. in sample mm -hmm. handling systems, yeah. which allow to give an additional uh, protection of the analyzer system. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To continue from there, uh, you know, do you have a liquid stop there? <laughs> wow, this is <laughs> such a critical component. Uh, I know that many people has installed this. Most of the people has installed this, but do they really understand why do they install this yeah so i like to share this uh you can see that this is the last part just before the gas analyzer yeah the last part of the gas analyzer we call it a liquid stop the reason is to continue from uh, earlier you see that if there is a there is a liquid sensor if there stops the sample pump it protects the gas analyzer it, sometimes it might be it might be a slight liquid carryover. We do not we do not want this liquid carry over into the gas analyzer. So we have this liquid stop to block the, any humidity, any uh, water mist, all right, to protect the gas analyzer. That's the reason number one. Reason number two, earlier we have a flow meter. Earlier we have a flow meter, and this regulated flow meter with sample flow. Uh, you know the, the final flow meter to the gas analyzer you can see that the, the the flow meter at the bottom there is a orifice there this orifice is allows the uh, the, the flow rate to, to to concentrate on the on the orifice and started to expand and that causes a differential pressure that differential pressure over time all right it might create a condensation a small droplets of condensation if, you, if there is a presence of SO3, all right, it will cause reacted with the concent concentration to become a, a sulfuric acid. Therefore, again, you know, the liquid stop is to protect, all right, it uh, arrest the acid mist as well as the water. Again, mm -hmm. is the final is to protect the gas analyzer. So it is so important that all gas analyzer must install this filter, this liquid stop. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I'm, if I'm going too fast, you know. Let no, me know no, 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 yeah, no, 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 no. I think I can, uh, I can, I can follow. I'm just thinking, um, yeah. How how can we can we? What's the best way to explain it? Because we have so many components here, and uh, no, no. I hope 
we can our audience is able to follow the the structure that we are not jumping that we are not jumping too much okay but but i think jameson we we gave an overview of the very basic components and components you saw in this overview is components uh yeah except maybe the connecting vessel <laughs> um is, is something you could also include into your your um, gas cooler or into the gas conditioning system. Um, but the, there is um, a, 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 a big set of solutions we have. Um, uh, like I can I can show it here. Um, uh, additional filter and scrubbers as uh, options. Uh, Jameson, yeah. maybe you can yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. E explain why do we need that and why is this yeah. So this is this is this is you see in in the sample many times we think that you know in in a this is the dream it would be a dream that the sample is fixed they do not vary, but right. you know in reality and in the process changes they are fugitive gases and uninvited gases that comes into uh, into uh, a sampling system all right so some of these fugitive gases we have to whether we have to uh, through a kind of a scrubbing or kind mm -hmm. of uh, acid track them or you kind of a separator or we can do kind of filtration this we wanted to get rid of these fugitive gases all right before it goes into gas analyzer so what you're holding over here we used to call it as an aerosols filter aerosols filter right. so mm -hmm. what is aerosols in this defined aerosols there are many gases such as for example uh, unburned hydrocarbon the mm -hmm. unburned how do you know that it's uh, that combustion takes taken place 100 percent in the flue gas they are in the small presence of hydrocarbon which is unburned and in the spectrum of infrared, all right, hydrocarbon could be an interference. So this is one of the reasons that we have to remove uh, this. In this case, some people call it VOC. It's the same meaning. In this case, yeah, is to track the VOC uh, before it reaches the, uh, the infrared measurement. Mm -hmm. Another example is SO3. You know, in, in, except for natural gas, all those coal-fired, whether it is uh, fuel oil, whether it's diesel, the amount of SO3 that coming into the, the systems is present. In, 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 there is a SO3, in fact, you see. So we need to remove this acid. We need mm -hmm. to track the SO3. So if you put... If you see it, right, uh, you, you see, you show me, show the audience the filter. Yeah. So these are the things that in this filter uh, at the bottom, there's a red uh, knob. Yeah, you can, uh, you can remove them. You can see that the filter will change, this field, will change color. Yeah. So once you remove and drain them, there's a water. All right. But be careful. Don't drink them. <laughs> Just yeah, kidding. That's, that's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if you put it after the pump, if you put this install after the pump, you can use it as a one in, two out as a bypass, all right, to mm -hmm. regulate your, mm -hmm. your your sample flow as well. Yeah, so that's, it depends that's, on how that's, we regulate that's what them. it show that that's what it also displays here on the description of this of this product. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, exactly like you said, there's one in, there's two outs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. So and um yeah, I would say the the solution, the right filter solution, um, really depends on the application you try to measure, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, there, therefore, um, just share the application, and then we can our team um, we can we can help you to decide what best uh, what what filtration will be best for your application in order to protect, um, yeah, on the one hand side, protect the equipment, but also make the measurement available, right? I think this is uh, something also important. Um, 
Jameson, I think, I mean, all of these items, let's go through it. We have the flow alarm. Um, yeah, we have the liquid alarm, flow alarm. Maybe what is the difference between the flow alarm and the liquid alarm? Um, yeah. For the liquid alarm, I think I, we already mentioned um, that would be if there is too much water, there will mm -hmm. be an alarm going out. And we also yeah. have an option which we integrate into the flow sensor, mm -hmm. um, which um, yeah, allows to indicate if the flow is less than a certain, um, yeah, a certain value, um, yeah. then there will also be an alarm set uh, to, yeah. to the analyzer system. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So this is yeah. also maybe something. Yeah, the condensate guard. Um, Jameson, I have one here oh, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. so this condensate guard itself uh there are two sensors what they have display here is two sensors uh you know for the uh engineers they can actually the, the the whole detection is really about condensation uh do not do not mistaken this as a, a moisture analyzer there is no 4 to 20 mini m that represents the moisture no this is not the one this is actually a condensate guard once there's a droplets of water all right it detected by means of conductivity and it triggered an alarm all right, uh, right. Uh, and one more thing is that you know you can you can actually uh, adjust the sensitivity all right so uh, what do i mean by that you know, right especially when uh, when we deliver a, a system uh, from Germany, all right, and when it comes to certain part of Asia, like my country in Singapore is so high humidity, so hot, and you are so cold over there, you know, during the startup, for example, there are there are many times that, you know, you, you realize that the pump is not running, right, even the power up, because there is mm. a condensation already happened <laughs> at mm. the detector. So please... Yeah. Remove the detector. Use a use a very uh, soft cloth and uh, dry it and put it back, and the pump will run. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's that that's the good practical advice we also <laughs> would like to share. Yeah. So this is just an an additional uh, an, an additional option here um, with this uh, condensate guard. Um, yeah. I mean, then finally we have this collection with. Uh, I think it's not. Um, very special, so to say, um, but it is going to be visible from the outside how much mm -hmm. condensate will be uh, collected there. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, again, I think it's also <laughs> an important, uh, um, yeah, an important part of a gas conditioning uh, systems and items. So yeah, what we would also like um, to mention here is a solenoid valve unit. Sometimes when you have different gas sampling streams at the same time, and you have to connect each and every um, gas sample stream um, and allocate, um, then um, yeah, this this is a solution made from stainless steel, and um, maybe not very common. I must admit, in emission monitoring. But in process measurements, like I said, when you have different tapping, tapping or sampling points, this can be a very um, helpful uh, application, uh, which which helps you to, um, yeah, uh, divide from what stream comes what. Okay, um, yeah. Finally, if this is an accessory, uh, not sure, but uh, the uh, NO2 and O converter, um, the Jimson, is something yeah. which, yeah. depending on the measurement application, is very mm -hmm. important, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, especially when we're talking about using the infrared analyzer, and we're measuring NOx as a uh, output so therefore we have to convert any. As you know, you know, infrared is difficult to measure NO2. So what it, what we do is that we convert NO2 in to become NO, all right? So it become a total NO before it flows into the gas analyzer to produce an NOx, all right? Uh, NOx. Mm -hmm. So this 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 NOx converter, what's different from uh, you know from the market is that this is a molybdenum cartridge. Mm -hmm. A molybdenum cartridge. Uh, we have to do two things that we have uh, to advance ourselves. Number one is a low temperature. 
only 225, unlike uh, others, which is uh, more than 300 degrees. Now, why it is only 225 is because we wanted to X. The conversion efficiency remained unchanged. However, we can able to you know, prolong the, the conversion lifespan. Number two, this is very important. Number two is that the monetum cartridge do not produce any CO. All right, that means in the midst of conversion, there is no carbon monoxide generated. Okay. 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 Got it. Got it. Yeah, I think. Um, okay, Jimson, it's it's again nine o'clock. Um, <laughs> one hour, one hour of session. Uh, yeah, like like I said, um, it's. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's a lot of questions. No, no, it's a lot of topics we just touched on. Um, I hope we were able to give um, a an, an good overview. Um, James, maybe one, one question because we, we haven't mentioned to get the, uh, um, the Q&A session here. How do you measure the efficiency of the NOx converter? Yeah, this is really a, uh, I, I'm not an expert in this area, but when I was selling this converter to many countries, right, particularly in China, it's such a big market, and the uh, Chinese EPA required us to prove uh, the efficiency, you see. So in Europe, we have to be uh, a better or equal or better than 96% uh, conversion. The question right now is that, is there a converter that has a TUV certified? This is a big question. You see, actually, so I think Jameson, there is. I mean, depending on the measurement, the converter itself also has to be measured um, mm -hmm. as part of the entire system. Yes, this is EN fifteen two six seven is is the um, the regulation here, and as part of this, obviously, obviously, uh, but there's no own certification of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jameson. Um, you are available. We are available for, for any questions. So um, again, um, maybe to be as you can share the link of, of um, uh, Jemson's Calendly booking. Um, this is an exclusive offer to the people who are attending this webinar here. We want to thank you um, yeah, for, for attending our session and um, yeah, stay safe and uh, we, we hope you liked it and we hope you leave, leave a comment. Stay safe and, and all the best. Bye-bye.